Now the approximation is greater than what we found before, which was eight and two thirds. Why is that? Can someone remind me? Why is our approximation larger than the actual answer? Can anyone tell me? Might help if you go back to this diagram here. Yep. Yeah, very good. Perfect. Okay, so Moe, like you said, there is this missing sliver, which I, um, I had highlighted before, but I deleted it. So that part's missing. And yes, the trapezium is above the curve. Now, I'm not going to work through a full example here, but I hope you can understand that in some cases, it will be exactly the opposite. The trapezium will not overestimate the area. It will underestimate the area. Now I wonder if you can think about a situation in which that would occur. What kind of function would the trapezium underestimate the area instead of overestimating the area, which is what happened here. Okay, I wonder if you can maybe do a scribble on your piece of paper. Here if I just draw a curve like this, um, y equals x squared, we saw it there on the uh, right hand side. If I drew a curve like this, Okay, um, if I did this guy and I was interested say in the area under this part of the curve, right? Have a look at this. Um, if I draw the trapezium by joining the tops of those two green lines, then you can see, <laughs> good try Ellie, that's all right. Uh, it really depends on where, right? So if I draw this guy here, there's the trapezium and clearly it's actually less than what the actual area is. So if you go ahead and you uh, use this trapezium method, um, you would get a result that was less than the area, not more. Okay, <laughs> we're all proud of you, Sasha is correct. All right, so what do we got here? We've got an area of 10, we can see it's an approximation. But I kind of think that we're really far off, right? Like we're one and a third units off. That's like a, I don't know, 12, 15% error. That's pretty bad, right? So can we make this any better? Can we make it any more accurate? And the answer is yes, you can. Now, Max, to your question in the exam, would they tell you to use this method? The answer is yes. Yes, they absolutely would. Uh, in fact, they'll even use language like um, use the trapezoidal rule to approximate the area underneath this curve. Um, and they'll be even more specific than that, um, which I'll get to a bit later on. So Let's have a look at this same graph. Here it is, y equals x squared again. How can I use this same technique to get a more accurate result? Have a think, and I want you to remember back to the start of the lesson. Um, remember I showed you this. This is from earlier on, right? Um, if I put in more rectangles that are thinner, you get a more uh, accurate result, right? Because there's less of those, as, as Moist called them, less of those slivers, or the slivers are smaller, right? Actually, there's, there's more slivers, but the slivers are very tiny. So I can use the same technique here. Uh, Fiona, Hamza, I'm, I'm, you're exactly right. I'm going to use more trapeziums, right? It's like, okay, um, let's just throw more, throw more mats at it, right? So I'm going to take this same guy here. And instead of dividing it into a, or you know, approximating it with a single trapezium, I'm going to approximate it with two trapeziums. Okay, what are we going to get? Well, if I slice it right down the middle, like so, and then I've got the same vertical lines that I had before. Okay, what I can do is, and you'll see it's going to get pretty close, right? I can draw a line that's straight here, and that will give me one trapezium on the right. And then I can draw another one over here, which will give the trapezium on the left. So I'm going to have two trapeziums that will approximate this area. Now, because they're the same kind of shape, I can use the same kind of technique. You just have to be a little more careful, okay? For starters, um, let's go back to that area formula of a trapezium, right? The area is um, the height, the perpendicular height, and then you needed the two parallel sides, right? That's if we were dealing with one trapezium, but now we've got two. So how do I, you know, uh, um, adjust this formula so that I can use it uh, for this particular kind of um, setup where there's more than one trapezium? Well, each trapezium will have its own height. Um, you can see here, there's a height here and it's identical to this height over here. Now, what was our height before? It was two, right? Now I've divided it into two equal trapeziums or two trapeziums with equal height, I should say. So what will each height be? It's not rocket science. Go ahead and type it in the chat so that I know that you're actually paying attention. Fantastic, okay, yes, we're getting there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yes, exactly right. So Ellie, you've identified they're both separate, but they are equal. I've kind of divided it exactly down the middle. So I've got one and then I've got one, okay? 
Now, I've got my height and I've set up this, this sort of arrangement so they're the same, but now I need my parallel sides, right? And this time, I don't just have two parallel sides, Y1 and Y2, right? Y1 and Y2 will just deal with the first trapezium. I'm gonna call this one Y1, and I'm gonna make Y2 the one in the middle so that I can go in order. Now I've got, yeah, Mo, you're well done. I've got a Y3, okay? So what's gonna happen here? Well, I need a few more what we call function values. That's actually the name of these. Y1, Y2, and Y3, we call them function values. And the reason for that is because we, we get them, we evaluate them by substituting into the function, okay? Now what we can do is we can evaluate each of these function values the way we did before. We already have the bottom one, it's one. We already have the last one, it's nine. What's the middle one? What's y2? Can we square numbers, team? <laughs> Come on, you're 12, we can do this. Maybe you're catching up with your writing, that's okay. Fantastic, yay, maybe it's my internet connection. All right, so there's my middle function value, it's gonna be four. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, this is still an approximation, right? I'm approximating a curvy thing with a straight line or, or multiple straight lines, but I'm gonna get a better approximation, right? Let's have a go at this. I'm gonna write, whoopsie daisy, area, and to uh, distinguish it from the previous one, uh, I'm just gonna write, I'm just gonna call this um, area two, okay? Again, it's still approximate, but now I'm going to work out each of the two uh, trapeziums, right? So it's h over 2, which is 1 over 2. And then I'm going to have, uh, in fact, I'm going to write that as h over 2, just so that we can see the next line. I'm going to have y1 plus y2, that'll deal with the first trapezium. And then I deal with the second trapezium, same height, but its parallel sides will not be y1 and y2, they'll be y2 and y3, okay? Now, I can uh, do all the substitutions here, right? We're gonna to return to this line later on, but I can write this as one over two, one plus four, and then it's one over two again, four plus nine. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify. Um, I'm gonna get five on this one, and I'm gonna get 13 on the other one. So that gives me five on two, plus 13 on two. That gives me 18 on two, which is nine. Okay. So what have we just seen? Well, by using more trapeziums, I can get a more accurate result. And this is much closer, right? Um, think back to our original integral. We know the area is exactly eight and two thirds. We tried this first way with one trapezium. We got 10, I mean, at least we're in the right ballpark, but we could do better. Uh, and we did. By putting in more trapeziums, we got a more accurate result. We're only within one third of the actual area.